This is the second section of chapter two on continuous distributions. And this section is the cumulative distribution function. So first of all, the cumulative distribution function or CDF is the area from the left up to X. Now you would have come across the cumulative distribution function before when you were using your calculator to work out the area from the left for a normal distribution. So what does that look like on a graph? So here we've got an axis here, and let's say we've got some sort of function like this, which gives the probability. Okay, and let's say that this starts over here. Then if I start from this side, and then let's say I'm going all the way up to X, then the area all the way up to X, whatever that value of X is, is defined by the cumulative distribution function. So I plug in a value of X and it gives me the area up to that point. Now, so we don't confuse the CDF with the PDF, we use a capital F. That is the CDF. So before we used the lowercase f when we had a function for the PDF. So it's important that we use the right upper or lowercase symbol. Now there is a link between the PDF and the CDF, and that is if we have a PDF, if we integrate that PDF, we know we get the area under uh, the graph, that will give us the CDF. So if we start with f of x, lowercase, that will give us f of x, x, uppercase. So then obviously the opposite of that will be differentiation. So we'll just write down that we're integrating here, integration, and this is differentiation. So if we differentiate um, a CDF, that will give us a PDF. And we just need to remember that when we integrate, obviously we've got a constant of integration, which would need to work out. Now that constant of integration should be easy enough to work out because if we put in the value of X at this end, we know that the total probability is zero. So if I put in that value of X there, let's call it X1, then I know that the total probability, the cumulative probability is equal to zero. So that will allow me to work out C. And then at this end, if I put in this value of X, let's call this X2, and that's right at the other end, I know that the cumulative probability is equal to one. So we can use those bits of information, substituting the X, make the cumulative distribution function equal to one to work out C, or we can put in the lower value of X here, and make the put that value of x in into the CDF, make it equal to zero, and work out C that way. So you can use either way to do that. Example four: the random variable x has probability density function f of x a quarter x for x between one and three, and including one and three, and zero for anything else. So the way that I'm going to find f of x, the cumulative um, density function is by integrating the probability density function. And notice I'm not going to use any limits. You can solve it by using limits, but I don't use that method. So we're going to integrate a quarter x dx. Okay, so when I integrate that, I become a quarter x squared over two. So one eighth x squared plus c then I know that when X is one, the cumulative probability is zero because there's no probability up to there. And then when X is three, the cumulative probability is going to be one. So I could use either one of those. I'll show both ways of doing it. So let's say that when X equals one, the cumulative probability is zero. So let's see what we get for C that way. So we'll have um, one eighth 
times by 1 squared plus c equals 0. So that will give me c equals negative an eighth. So let's write that down, c equals negative an eighth. So I could do it that way. Or the other way I could do it is to say, right, when x equals 3, so right at the other end here, the cumulative probability is going to be 1. So that would be 1 eighth times by 3 squared plus c equals 1. So that will give me um, 9 eighths plus c equals 1, which again gives you c equals negative an eighth. So we can do it either way. Whichever way we do it, we'll get a final answer of our cumulative distribution function is 1 eighth x squared minus an eighth. And that'll be our answer. Now, I could also do this by putting in limits of the lower value 1 and the upper limit of x. So another way of doing it we write it up here is that you put in a lower limit of the lower value but your upper limit must be x because you're finding a probability up to x so that's an alternative method that you can use example five the random variable x has this probability density function so you can see that there's three lines to this so between 1 and 2, the probability is a fifth. Between 2 and 4, the probability is a fifth, x minus 1, and 0 for anything else. And it says, specify fully the cumulative distribution function of x. Now, we need to be careful with this one because our cumulative distribution function is going to be made up of several parts because there are different probabilities depending on the different values of x. Now we do need to specify what the probabilities are for all values of x. So the probabilities actually don't start until we get to one. So before one, the cumulative probability is zero. So for x uh, less than or equal to one, the cumulative probability function is zero. Now we're going to work out the probability between 1 and 2 using integration. So we'll find f of x between the values of 1 and 2. All right, so this means that we're going to integrate 1 fifth with respect to x. Again, see here no limits. So that will give us 1 fifth x plus c. Now, we don't know what the probability, cumulative probability is when we get to two, but we know the cumulative probability up to one is zero. So uh, when x equals one, the cumulative probability is zero. So we can use that to find c. So that basically means that one fifth x 1 plus c is equal to 0. So that will give us c equals negative a fifth. Okay, so let me highlight these as we go along. So that's one part of our answer. Another part of our answer now is that we can say that when x is between 1 and 2, the cumulative probability is equal to one fifth x minus a fifth. So that's going to be the next part of our answer. So we've done the probabilities before one. We've done the probabilities between one and two. We now need to do the probability from two to four. So this will be the last part. So that will be integrating the one fifth x, I'll expand the brackets, minus a fifth with respect to x. Again, no limits. 
and that will give me uh, one fifth x squared over two or one tenth x squared. I could have put the fifth over the other side and factorized it, but it's easy enough. And then minus one fifth x plus c. Now, I don't know what the probability is up to two, the cumulative probability, but I do know the cumulative prob probability up to four is one. So when x equals four, the cumulative probability is one. So I'll substitute that in to find what c is. So I'll have one tenth times by x squared, four squared, minus a fifth times by four plus c equals one. So if we add these two fractions together, and uh, that's going to be 16 over 10 um, or 8 over 5 minus 4 over 5. That leaves us 4 fifths, 4 over 5 plus C equals 1, which means that C is equal to uh, a fifth. So now what we have is when X is between the values of 2 and 4, it's meant to be an x in the middle, 2 and 4, its cumulative um, distribution function is going to be 1 tenth x squared minus a fifth x plus c, which is a fifth. Okay, so we don't just leave those three answers floating around. We need to use the proper notation. So we write it like this, the cumulative distribution function is equal to, and then we use these curly brackets like we do for the PDF. And then we need to write down these three bits of information. We write down the probability function first, and then the values of X second. So starting with the first bit, we have a probability of zero when the x is less than or equal to 1. We have a uh, probability of 1 fifth minus a uh, fifth. So 1 fifth x minus a fifth when x is between 1 and 2. And then the last bit, we have a probability of 1 tenth x squared minus a fifth x plus a fifth when x is between two and four. Now we know that after four the probability is going to remain at one so we do need to put that in as well we need to finish it off so when x is greater than four the probability is one. Now sometimes you might see in books they put like a semicolon here just to divide up the probability with the values of x okay so that will be our final answer here so make sure that every value of x is accounted for even those that are not given in the um, original question so every single value of x needs to have a cumulative probability associated with it just like Every value of X is accounted for, uh, for the probability density function. Example six, the random variable X has cumulative distribution function here. So when X is less than zero, it's zero. Between naught and two, it's one fifth X plus three over 20 X squared. And for X greater than two, the probability is one. Okay, so start with part A. We want to find the probability that X is less than or equal to 1.5. So this uh, cumulative distribution function gives us the probability up to a value, which is exactly what we want. We want a probability up to 1.5. So we just substitute 1.5 into this. So we're going to find F of 1.5 which is one fifth times 1.5 plus three over 20 times 1.5 squared. 
Now that gives us an exact answer of 51 over 80. And SD button, we could either give it as 0.6375. So anything more than four decimal places, really, you want to give the answer exact if possible, if it's a fraction. Part B, want to find a probability um, of X between 0.5 and 1.5. So the way that we do this is we're going to find the probability up to 1.5 and subtract the probability up to 0.5. Now we don't need to adjust it and add one or take away one because this is not a discrete distribution, it's a continuous one. So f of 1.5 we've already worked out, that's 51 over 80. And then we subtract what we get by putting 0.5 into this function. So that would be a fifth times by 0.5 plus 3 over 20 times by 0.5 squared. Yes, nice, it gives us exactly a half. Okay, so we'll move on to um, part C which is the probability that x equals 1. Now remember, the probability that uh, something equals exactly a value with a continuous distribution is just 0, so we don't need to do any work working there. In part d, it asks us to work out the probability density function. Now remember, the way that we get from this the, to the probability density function is by differentiation. So we want to differentiate the probability uh, or cumulative distribution function, uh, differentiate with respect to x. That means we're going to differentiate. Now, when we differentiate an expression, we just put d at the top. So it's not y equals something or, uh, you know, we've got uh, this equal to a letter. It's just that expression on its own. So there's nothing to go at the top, just the d means differentiating an expression. So um, differentiate 1 fifth x plus 3 over 20 x squared. Remember there's no plus c, we're not integrating. So 1 fifth x will just become a fifth and 3 over 20 x squared, that will become 6 over 20 x, over 20 x, uh, which is the same as 3 over 10 x. So now we need to finish it off by using the correct notation. So the probability density function is going to be made up of different bits. So here, this is the probability between x is 0 and 2. So 1 fifth plus 3 over 10 x, that's for x between 0 and 2. And then for anything else, the probability is 0. So I'll just put that down. So 0 for anything else. So we just write the word otherwise. So you should now be able to do exercise 3b on pages 54 to 56 of the textbook.